Good morning, everybody. So this is going to be a lecture on diuretics. I'm going to share my screen with you and we are going to get started. So here. And this would be in your pharmacology book, chapter 33. And it's all about diuretics. And I know we call them water pills. Um, and we call them that because it makes people urinate. But we're nurses, so we're going to call them diuretics. So we're going to get started. And um, just to understand, they treat edema for one thing. And edema is just an accumulation of excess water or fluid in the body. And edema that's associated with heart failure, right sided heart failure, people would have edema in their body. In other words, their feet, their ankles will swell. If they have left sided heart failure, that would be pulmonary edema. So that's edema fluid that accumulates in the lungs. Other reasons for edema, corticosteroids, estrogen therapy, cirrhosis of the liver can also cause edema. But for our intents and purposes right now, we're going to focus on cardiac. Okay. So what are the meds you have to know? You have to know loop diuretics and those, there's two of them that you need to know, furosemide and bumetanide, that's Lasix and Bumex. They are potassium depleting. In other words, they can cause hypokalemia and Lasix can cause ototoxicity. In other words, damage your hearing. And one of the first signs of ototoxicity is tinnitus ringing or buzzing in the ear. So you would instruct your patient, if you hear a ringing or buzzing in the ear, stop the drug, call the doctor. Can also cause nephrotoxicity. In other words, damage to the kidneys. So we tell the patient, if you notice there's a change in your urinary habits or your urine looks really dark or concentrated or you're not urinating as much as you normally do, call the doctor. And also, it's a sulfa-based drug. So if the patient's allergic to sulfa, sulfonamides, they should not have Lasix. Then your potassium sparing diuretics, there's only one, spironolactone. And the big problem here is hyperkalemia. It can cause hyperkalemia. And then you have thiazides. And the ones that you need to know are hydrochlorothiazide and chlorthalidone. And they also can cause hypokalemia. So what are we using to treat? Like I said, edema that's associated with heart failure. Hypertension. If we've tried things like lifestyle modifications, lose weight, stop smoking, stay away from salt, and that's not working, usually the first line of defense from a medication perspective is hydrochlorothiazide, a low dose. See if that works. So it's used to treat hypertension. Uh, diuretics are used for some renal diseases. Cerebral edema, which is edema in the brain acute glaucoma and increased intraocular pressure. In other words, if there's a fluid buildup and pressure buildup behind the eye, you can use diuretics. Also used for short-term management of abdominal ascites. Interactions, you need to know the ones that I have listed here because digoxin is one of the ones that's important to know. I'm gonna take a quick break for one second. I will be back. Okay. I am back. Let's go back to sharing the screen again and continue on with diuretics. Okay, so interactions, drug-drug interactions. When we're talking about loop diuretics and thiazides, so furosemide, bumetanide, hydrochlorothiazide, chlorthalidone. Interactions with DIG. People, if they're on digoxin, Digoxin toxicity, the risk of that increases with hypokalemia. Well, loop diuretics and thiazides can cause hypokalemia. Anticoagulants, there's a risk there for bleeding. Lithium, phenytoin, NSAIDs and salicylates. So with lithium, there's an increased risk for lithium toxicity because secondary to hyponatremia. Because remember, when you think lithium, you think salt diuretics, you're losing fluid, you're losing sodium as well. And so you're going to be at risk for lithium toxicity. If the patient's on phenytoin, which is an anti-seizure medication, there is a possibility the diuretic won't be quite as effective. Same thing with NSAIDs and salicylates. 
Okay, so salicylates, to refresh your memory, need to know this forever, aspirin, NSAIDs, ibuprofen, naproxen sodium, meloxicam, celecoxib. Okay, make sure you know that, all important stuff. And then the potassium sparing diuretic, only one, spironolactone. It's the only one potassium sparing, which means they'll hang on to potassium. The interaction here, if they're on an ACE inhibitor, an angiotensin II receptor blocker, aldosterone antagonist, which is a pleuridone, or a potassium supplement, they're going to be at an increased risk for hyperkalemia because spironolactone can cause hyperkalemia and so can all of those drugs. It's pretty straightforward. Before you administer diuretics, you're always gonna make sure daily weights, daily weights, daily weights, not every other day, not weekly, daily, because a weight gain of two to three pounds in a day or three to five pounds in a week is fluid. You did not eat too much at the all you can eat buffet. It is fluid, okay? You must always look at the laboratory results, especially potassium and sodium. Yeah, you're gonna look at mag and calcium. You're gonna look at renal function. Are their kidneys okay? BUN should be 10 to 20, creatinine 0 0.2 to 1.4. Know those numbers. One more time. Know those numbers, okay? And if a patient has edema, whether it's pulmonary in the lungs, peripheral, feet, legs, abdominal, you have to document specifically what was the edema before they started the treatment? What does it look like after? In other words, is the treatment working, right? That's the question. And remember with daily weights, weigh the patient at the same time every day, the same scale, the same location, after you wake, after you pee, before you eat, right? Just keep saying that over and over again. There are some nursing diagnoses in here, risk for deficient fluid volume, risk for injury because their blood pressure will drop. Um, what do you need to know to implement? You know, weigh the patient daily. Like I said before, make sure that's very important because if we're giving them a drug to reduce edema, is it working? They should be losing water weight. And always blood pressure, pulse, respiratory rate. And if they have edema in the extremities, let gravity help. Elevate the extremities above the level of the heart to help get some of that fluid moving, right? Patients with hypertension, if they're using hydrochlorothiazide to treat high blood pressure, always monitor their blood pressure. That's pretty much common sense. And always, if, you know, regardless of whether it's furosemide, bumetanide, hydrochlorothiazide, chlorthalidone, those are potassium depleting, or spironolactone, potassium sparing. All of the diuretics will affect potassium. So the patient's going to be at risk for either hypo or hyperkalemia. So you should always be monitoring their serum potassium levels. And FYI, hyperkalemia, we can give them k -exalate. And k -exalate will literally draw that high potassium out of their blood and they'll excrete it in their feces. And if their potassium is low, well, we can just give them some potassium. It's pretty straightforward. So this is really, really important. If a patient's on a diuretic, even if it's a BID or twice daily dose, it should never be given later than 12 or one o'clock in the afternoon. Let me say that again. You should never have a person take a diuretic after 1 p.m. Why? Because it's going to make them pee. And for older folks, they read the label. It says, okay, furosemide, take one tablet twice a day. They'll take it in the morning and then they'll take another one in the evening. And then in the middle of the night, they'll have to pee. And then they will try to jump out of the bed and then they will fall and then they will either break a hip or crack their head open. So because of the high risk for falls, it gives them urinary urgency. When they have to pee, they have to pee right then and there. So you never give the drug if the patient's at home, never give it past one o'clock in the afternoon. Make sure you know that. Monitor their pulse, you know, rate and rhythm, their blood pressure. If they feel lightheaded, make sure that you get them assistance for ambulation and transfers and always instruct them to change positions slowly. So don't try to jump out of the chair or the bed and, you know, 
get your day started. When you move from a lying position to a sitting position, sit there for a minute, you know, let your blood pressure kind of catch up so you don't fall down. And then um, educating the patient about the drug, you know, don't reduce their fluid intake because a lot of times what will happen is the patient will, oh, well, the, 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 it makes me pee. So I just don't drink. You can't do that. Now you can't drink a lot of fluid. Usually people with heart failure will be on a fluid um, restriction. Usually some, somewhere around 1500 mils a day. It's pretty typical, but they cannot just stop drinking because they don't wanna have to go run and pee, right? That's not good. They can wind up in a severe state of dehydration, okay? And you know, make sure they don't drink alcohol, stay away from over-the-counter non-prescription drugs without talking to the physician, be careful if they're driving, and you know, they should report if they're feeling weak or dizzy when they're taking this med, okay? It's very important. Um, Photosensitivity is important to note too, that they can, um, if they're exposed to the sunlight, especially in the middle of the day, they can get burned, they should wear sunscreen. And people who are diabetic and take the loops or the thiazides, they need to watch their blood sugar because loops and thiazides only with diabetic patients can increase blood glucose levels. It's important to know. Um, Here's more important stuff. I know this is a lot. So if the patient's taking potassium sparing diuretic, in other words, there's only one, spironolactone, they have to avoid foods that are high in potassium and they should never use salt substitutes. They can use Mrs. Dash, black pepper, garlic, other herbs and spices, but they cannot use salt substitutes. A salt substitute that looks like salt is potassium and they're gonna wind up hyperkalemic, okay? So it's very important to know. And, you know, again, did it work? And that's diuretics. So remember the meds you need to know, furosemide, bumetanide, hydrochlorothiazide, chlorthalidone, and spironolactone. The end. All right, I am gonna stop this video, and if you have questions, you know where to find me. Until next time, peace.